Hi everyone, Rob here again at Power Learning Solutions and today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a live poll that you can use with your class that will give them instant feedback during a live class session. I was approached recently by a colleague who was wondering how they could do this for free uh, during a live class, how they could uh, set up a poll that they could share with their students in the live class or in the LMS if, uh, if the student was not able to attend a live class, how that poll could uh, give the students instant feedback on their responses and how they could share uh, a live demonstration with the class of all of the responses that they had received. There are a lot of great tools out there, different polling and quizzing tools, but I find the easiest way to do this for free is to use Google Forms. Now, to set this up, I've used Google Forms to create this sample form here now. I have two questions for my students. One is on uh, how to do some basic formatting in Word, and the other is a trigonometry question. Typically, I wouldn't actually give a real poll that has both uh, word formatting questions and math questions in it, but I wanted to demonstrate a, d a couple of different uh, feedback techniques and, and question creating techniques here. So the first thing I've done is set up a question where the students can insert their name. You're going to ask, well, what about privacy? You're using Google Forms. You may not want uh, to actually collect student names in there. I've added this little notation for my students that if I have assigned them a code name or an ID number, then they should enter that here instead of their name. That way you're not collecting identifiable data about your students, even if this is just a formative poll. Um, the first question here has to do with Word, and I have that set up as a new section. So if you want to add a new section in here, you just click on this, these little buttons when you're adding questions. This bottom one is to add a section. So this is my formatting in Word section. I have a question here for them that I have set as required, and I have two different options. When adding these options, I selected the option down here to go to section based on the answer, and uh, I have a section set up for incorrect answers and a section for correct answers. So I have my two answers for them. If they give me a correct response, they're gonna get this little graphic, awesome, that's correct. And a question if they're ready to proceed to the next question in the poll. I've given instructions up here at the top that if they're doing this poll during a live class, they should wait for me to let them know when it's time to move on to the next question. But if they're doing this outside of class time, just click yes whenever they're ready to proceed. I've also configured this uh, ready to proceed question, the yes, no, with two options. The yes option will take them to the next question, the trigonometry question. And the no question is going to take them to uh, back to the formatting question. It'll let them try it again. So I've given them a notice here that they can try it again by clicking on no. If they get their, uh, their question incorrect, then I have added a video here. Google Forms will let you insert a YouTube video or a video from any source. It'll let you insert images. So I have simply clicked on the add video option. I put in a video here that shows you how to do some basic formatting and add and remove page breaks in Word. And I've got that same question here again, asking them if they're ready to proceed or if they want to try the question again. Coming on down to the trig question. This, uh, this time, this is a little more complicated because it's difficult in Google Forms or in a lot of these poll building tools to use math equations. So what I've done is I've used images here for these. Not the most friendly option from a digital accessibility standpoint. These questions aren't machine readable. You'd want to use some um, uh, math type in order to get screen readers to read it out. But this will work in a pinch for a, uh, a live class session, especially if you don't have any students who are going to be using screen reader applications. So I've put an image in here as part of the question. I've embedded it as part of the question. You can just click the image button here when you're typing your question. It'll let you upload that image. And I've used images here for my options for each of these questions. So when I add the question in, it gives me an option to upload. I drag and drop my image. And again, I've selected the option down here to go to section based on answer. If they pick option one, they're going to go on to the correct response. If they pick options two or three, those are incorrect. They're going to get this incorrect response. In this case, I've embedded an image that shows the correct formula for trig questions. I've also put in a YouTube video for them showing how to solve some basic uh, trig questions. 
And again, the question if they're ready to move on to the, to, uh, the next question or if they want to try it again. And my final section in here is just a simple, you rock, you're done with, the, with this poll, thanks for participating type of thing. So what does this actually look like when the students take the quiz? I can click on the preview up here and show you quickly what students will see. So I'm going to put in my code word, Kermit the Frog, and click on next. I get my first question. What's the best way to start a new page in a Word document? Uh, I'll select the incorrect option here. Use the, the enter key to move my cursor to the top of a new page and click next. I get this feedback video. I can watch that and I can indicate whether or not I'm ready to proceed. Let's try the no option. I'm not ready to proceed. I want to try that again. So it brings me back to my previous response. I can change that. Now I get awesome. That's correct. Am I ready to proceed? Yes. I'll click next. My instructor has told me it's time to move on to the next question because we're in a live class. Now I get to this trig question. So I see my options here. I'm going to pick an incorrect option this time. I'll pick option three. Click on next. I get this image that I had embedded that shows me the correct formula. I get my YouTube video that I can watch. No, I'm not ready to proceed. I'll try that again. So if I select option one this time, the correct option, again, I get the awesome. That's correct. Are you ready to proceed? Yes. Click next. Thank you for completing the activity and hit submit. Now, there are plenty of ways that you can share access to this quiz. Uh, if you want to share access to this quiz or poll during a live class, just click on the send button here. Click on this option to get the link and shorten your URL. I always like use the short form of the URL and copy. Now, I'm going to copy that onto a notepad for a minute. I like to keep these uh, links in advance uh, in a notepad here just to make it easier for me to get them uh, to them during class time. So I'll call this poll one. And now I am going to start a class meeting and show you how you can share this. I'll use Microsoft Teams, which we use at my university, Cape Breton University. I've got Teams open here. I'm going to pick my sample class demonstration. And I will start a quick meeting in here. No, I don't want to stream. I want to start a meeting. This will be a test meeting. So I'm in the meeting now. I'm going to turn off my webcam there because I'm already using that. And now I am going to start up the chat section. So, hey, students, I've got a quick poll for you. I want, to, uh, I want you to complete this poll. Just wait until I let you know when it's time to move on to the next question. We'll have a little chat about this. So I just paste my URL in here. It comes up for students in the chat area. They can click on the poll and it will launch the poll for them ready to complete. Now, what about if I'd like to share uh, a live demonstration with my students of the actual responses to the poll in real time during the class? Well, that's actually quite easy to do as well. I've got my Google form still open. I'm going to click on share my screen here and the option may look different depending on whether you're using Teams or Zoom or Adobe Connect, but the concept is simple enough. I'm going to share my screen. Now I am sharing the screen, so I'm going to go to my poll here in Google Forms and I'm going to click on responses. And you can see the responses that have already been submitted. So I just need to show these graphs to my students. If students are taking this in real time, right now I've got the one response. If they're taking it in real time, all I need to do is hit the refresh button here and it will update those responses for me. And I can share these with my students and discuss the responses that, uh, they, that they've given. So this is a great way to get formative feedback on how your class is doing with understanding uh, whether or not um, they know the concepts. Okay, so some of my students weren't able to make it to class. 
So I'd like them to complete this poll activity and, and take advantage of the formative feedback that's provided in the responses. Maybe I'd like some of the students who were in class to complete the activity as well to, uh, to try it again. I can easily share that in many places, including within learning management system. Now I have got um, an empty course shell open here. I'm going to create a new activity in here where I can share a copy of this poll. So I'm going to turn my editing on and your options may look different if you're using Canvas or Blackboard or uh, any other learning management system. Uh, but the principle is pretty much the same. In this case, I am going to go down to topic two here. I'm going to add just a page in this case. So I will click on page. Now I could add this inside of a Moodle book. I could add it inside of a lesson activity, but we'll just use a page for this sample class poll with feedback please complete and yeah i'll display this uh, instruction on the page for them so this is where i want to put a copy of this poll i'm just going to put a placeholder here maybe i've got some other text already on the page i want to put it in the middle of the page but for something like this i'd probably want to just have that by itself on the page so i'm going to put a placeholder here and I'll show you why for that in just a moment. I'm going to come back over to my Google form and I'm going to click on send again. This time I'm going to click the double arrows here to grab the embed code. I can uh, adjust my height and width here, but I'm not going to bother with that at this point. I'm going to copy that again. I do like to put it onto my notepad just in case I lose that code. And this is where I'm actually going to do a little bit of editing. It's easier here than once it's live in Moodle. I'm going to change that 640 to 100%. You can leave the height as you want, or you can change it. I'll just put the height at 800. You can leave it alone. But I do like to put in 100% width. That way, it will take up the entire width of the screen, no matter how big the student's monitor is. So it will adjust for them. There'll be no left-right scrolling, only up-down scrolling. I'm going to take this iframe code here, the embed code. I'm going to come back into my page. Now, I don't want to just paste it here because if I were to preview this, then, um, then I'm actually going to see that code. So what I want to do is edit this again. Sample poll with feedback. Please complete, and I'll put my placeholder here. If I'm only seeing one ribbon on my toolbar, I need to click this button to show all three and click the HTML source here. And I'm gonna overwrite my placeholder with that embed code. Hit update. Change any uh, configuration settings that I want here. So I am uh, happy with all of this. And I'm simply going to hit save and return to the course. So now my sample poll is here. I open this up and students can complete the poll right here inside of the LMS on their own time. And I will still get all of the feedback in here. If I would like to get, uh, get a copy of this feedback later on to analyze, I can easily Click on the spreadsheet view, create a new spreadsheet, and it will open up a spreadsheet of the responses for me that I can download to my computer.